welcome back to GKP Axolotl video. As you can see, we have a lot of baby axolotls. In fact, I don't think I've lost a single one yet. I've hatched my brine shrimp. I don't know if you can, if I can focus on it. Can you see them swimming about in there? I've been feeding them with brine shrimp for the last two to three days and already they're putting on some size. Let's see if I can zoom in on some of these little fellas. It's a bit tricky this is. Yeah, these are the albinos or golds. You can see the eyes are the same colour. They've got like a diamond pattern on the, on the back of the head. And there's no real markings down the bodies. Whereas these guys are the wild type and the leukistic. You can see the eyes quite clearly on these. That is a wild type. It's much darker than, than the rest. And the markings tend to be, the spe speckling's more defined down the body. Whereas this one is a leukistic because it's, it, around the head, it's a lot lighter. It's still got the diamond pattern on, on the back of the head, but all down the body, it looks a, a sort of light, um, pinky coffee color. There's no speckling, whereas you see some of these other ones, they've got speckling down the sides. They are wild type. So we've got at least three different varieties in here. And I shall just show you how I feed the axolotls. Let me zoom back out again. Length of clear plastic pipe. Put a finger over the end. Go right down to the bottom, take my finger off, take a, a scoop of brine shrimp up, and keep repeating the process. Give each container a decent amount of brine shrimp. Let's see if we can. See any feeding behaviour? No, they're just going crazy at the moment. They'll calm down in a bit anyway. But normally you can see them snapping at the brine shrimp as soon as you put it in. Right. I shall get back to you in a few days when they've grown a bit more. Hopefully they might have the front legs in a week or so. Thanks for watching. Bye. Hi guys. Just doing the axolotl special for the GKP. Feeding the baby axolotls, put a finger over the finger over the end, pop that right down to the bottom. There we go, get a full load of brown shrimp. Load these up. Do this every day in the evening. Give them a feed. Let's have a look. There, you see them snapping at the brine shrimp. They grow fast on this stuff. You can tell when they've had enough because the bellies are full and bright pink, full of brine shrimp. I normally leave them in the tubs for about four hours in the evening to have a really good feed. And then after that, I do a water change. Make a little net, tip them in a little net and do a complete water change. So then they're in fresh water all through the night up until tomorrow evening when they're ready for another feed again.
That way they don't have any mortalities. They're all looking really healthy, doing well. See some nice little poop there, where the, the pink bit where they've pooped out the brine shrimp. Won't be long till they start getting the um, front legs. You'll see the front legs start to develop just behind the feathery gills. They always come first. And then, I mean, these are three quarters of an inch. So it won't be long till I start weaning these onto bloodworm. Let's see if we can see. Have a look in this one. These are wild type, much bigger head darker markings on the body. Now this one is a, um, a leukistic, and that one is. Much lighter patterning on the head. There's the, that one's a wild type again. Let's see the difference. They've almost got a transparent head, whereas the wild type is more of a greeny, browny mottled. You've got a good hatch rate on these brine shrimp, got these off eBay. Put a teaspoon of, um, or half a teaspoon of brine shrimp in with a tablespoon of salt and it produces a whole lot of brine shrimp. And that will last them about three days till I need to do another batch. These are some of the golds, gold albinos. See the eyes, you can typical albino eyes, no pigment in them. You start to see a bit of the yellowy gold coloration starting on these. Beautiful these are when they get bigger. They have um, oh, what's called iridophores on, on, the, on the side of the tail, which are like um, iridescent, sort of look like carvings, like patterns all over the tail. Really pretty. That you don't get off some of the other varieties like the wild type. Yeah, they're all all doing well. Let's zoom out. There's a lot of axolotls. A heck of a lot. There's a nice big wild type. See the difference between the wild type. And the leukistic. Oh no, sorry, that, that's that's a that's an albino. And the wild type tend to grow bigger and faster than the the more fancy varieties. Yeah, I think the next video should have these on bloodworm, frozen bloodworm. I know me four out a cube of frozen bloodworm and sort out the tiny baby bloodworm for these guys and feed the bigger bloodworm, the full size ones, to the, the mummies and daddies in the shed so there's no waste. Right, I'll get all these fed and uh, get back to you in a later video. Thanks for watching. Hi guys, welcome back to the GKP. This is a continuation of the axolotl shorts we've been doing. Got a few of the big guys out today. Let's see if we can zoom in on these handsome fellas. These are two males and they are melanoids. These are kindly gifted to me from Vicky, Bubbles and Fins. Beautiful specimens. If you can just see the little eyes, they've got a blue ring around their eyes. They've got this lovely bluey sort of haze on the sides as well. Two adult males. I've got some albinos. This is a, a dirty leukistic albino. You can see the, the speckling on, on the head. That's where the dirty comes from. One's a female, and then if I can get it to focus. Yeah, that's another female. And then we have the 
normal albino type here. I've just given him some blood worm. That's what's what red is on his nose. He's just, just about to swallow them, I think. He's just sniffing them. Then we have, um, these are some wild types. These have like varying degrees of speckle and mottling on the sides. I think these are all females in here. All looking rather plump. And then these two fellas are a couple of golds or gold leukistics. Again, they've got the, the pinky albino type eyes. But these are slightly different. Let's see if I can show you. These have what's called iridophores on, on the tail, which is like um, a metallic patterning. You see it there, they're like the, the yellow speckles. There, and it's like a beautiful patterning and, and a sheen on the tail, like gold spots. Like a marbling effect. It goes, it goes down the back as well on these, and all down the sides. Right. I've been weaning the um, baby axolotls. I've got just a few of the babies in here. Onto bloodworm, frozen bloodworm. Put one or two of the smaller frozen bloodworm in. But the way I normally wean them is I put brine shrimp in. So they start feeding on the brine shrimp and put a few frozen bloodworm in as well. And um, it normally takes them a few days, but eventually they get the hang of it and they'll start feeding on the frozen bloodworm. In fact, um, you can tell when they've been eating the bloodworm because you can see the bloodworms inside them, they go bright red. And they look quite funny because it looks like they're a little red tongue because they're normally the end of the bloodworm sticking out of the mouth. It takes them quite a while to actually swallow them. While we've got these guys out, I want to have a go at feeding them with their favourite little tidbits. Prawns. Just these are the smart price frozen prawns. These in tweezers. There we go. They love prawns. Quite fun to feed them actually. Perfect food for them, it's high protein. Normally, all you have to do is waft it in front of the nose, and that will trigger a feeding response. Missed it that time. Oh, got it the second time. <laughs> Let's try another one. This fella looks hungry. Oh, yeah, straight on it. Calm yourselves down. Come on, have a bit of steak. Come on. Earthworms make good food for them as well, but um, they're a bit messy, earthworms are. They colour the water up with all the soil content in them. Prawns are a lot cleaner. Right. I shall carry on and give these the rest of their tea. I'm just doing a, a big clean out of these at the moment. That's why I've got, got them all inside. About every um, 10 to 14 days, I clean the tank out completely. Take them out, have a check, make sure they're all okay. And uh, 
back to go in the shed. Right, on the next update, hopefully, these little fellas will have legs. This is the rest of them. Still doing really well, not lost any, well, till a lie, probably lost about six early on, right at the beginning, but not lost any since, so we're going to have a lot of axolotls. Catch up with you later.